I have been asked to give my perspective on the use of naloxone in three to five minutes. The perspective from the front lines, if you will. And my perspective is this. Three to five minutes is the time that it takes for a human being to die from an opiate overdose. Three to five minutes is the time it should take our legislature to remove naloxone from the list of controlled substances. Three to five minutes is the time that it should take for our legislature to give blanket immunity to anyone who administers naloxone, and not just first responders. Because three to five minutes is the likely response time for law enforcement to arrive and some, sadly, continue to die in those three to five minutes. Why do we place artificial government impediments on saving lives? Why does Physician General Dr. Levine need to issue a statewide prescription? The reality is that Act Number 139 of 2015 made it more difficult for law enforcement first responders to obtain naloxone than for the general public prior to the, the first order that was uh, issued by Dr. Levine. Naloxone should be an over-the-counter medication. All who administer it should have immunity from suit because it has no side effects. And neighbors, employers, even a stranger who wait those three to five minutes should not have to watch another person die while they wait for first responders to arrive. Additionally, Law enforcement needs the authority, the legal authority, to transport an overdosed individual to the warm handoff at a medical facility. Where that epiphany, that enlightenment, that, that decision by the afflicted to change their behavior will most likely occur. Frequently, after saving a life, law enforcement is reduced to collecting the needles and the drug paraphernalia, and perhaps illegal drugs, and then walking away. Law enforcement currently lacks the legal ability, as recommended by their naloxone training, to compel transport to a hospital for further medical treatment, much less that warm handoff. Yes, we've saved over a thousand lives, and that's reason for celebration. York County, what I described as ground zero north, if you look at the, uh, uh, the, the map there, has alone has saved over 185 lives since April of 2015. Yet, I continue to receive letters that say, let them die. Addicts made their bed and now they should lay in it that all naloxone programs accomplish is to provide continued customer base for drug dealers. Those who write those letters have never been in law enforcement. They have never had to kneel over a dying teenage boy with a needle in his arm vacantly staring at the ceiling. Desperately applying CPR while the mother nearby sobs repeatedly, and praying for naloxone, a naloxone-carrying medic to arrive. And all the while knowing that with the simple squirt of spray up somebody's nose, that young man's life could have been saved. Those who write these letters don't understand that many who are saved are not addicts at all. They are your grandparents who, because of dementia, or simple forgetfulness, took too many pills that day. And there are those who are under a doctor's prescription in chronic agony who, sent, who needed just one more pain pill to get through the day. They are our children who, because of a stupid mistake, a decision at a party, are now paying with their life. They're us. That's who's being saved out there using naloxone. I will not ask law enforcement to stand down and watch someone die when it is in their power to save a life. I will not ask them to select who should and who should not be saved. It's not for first responders 
to judge who shall be the quick and who shall be the dead. The resolve to change behavior frequently comes after the afflicted person is revived. And the afflicted cannot act on that resolve when they are dead. These are my thoughts from the front lines. Thank you.